The big London derby is happening this weekend. Crystal Palace versus West Ham at Selhurst Park. And who better to preview that game with than my arch rival, my nemesis, D from Back of the Nest. What's happening with D? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for having me on here. Um, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this moment. Your own channel. Congrats on that. Congrats on hitting 1K as well. Um, but yeah, I've watched a few of your videos. You have mentioned in your last video, Rent Free, about Palace and Oliver Glasner when you're facing Villa. But have you got your West Ham top yet? I I've sent you the link multiple times. I'm waiting uh, to see if you got your West Ham. So top. busy. I'm gonna do it though. Don't worry. I'm not gonna run away from it. Maybe not this week, but I am gonna do it. I've, I've genuinely been busy. Um, <laughs> You but better yeah. get it ordered ASAP. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. But yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That was your moment last season. Um, but funny enough, you did end up losing, and the the you know your little nightmare against Villa happened, and here comes another nightmare. You're coming your way, <laughs> Palace. Well, listen, like we lost to the team in the Champions League. Um, so yeah, it was tough, but you know it's one of them ones you take it. You lost to a team. That finished in the bottom half of the table last season. Uh, mm. How does that feel? Um, it's been tough to. Talk. It's been frustrating. It has been um, because we were robbed more than anything. <laughs> we literally were. If you watch the game, I don't care if it's for West Ham, Crawley Town, Palace. If you know football, you would know that the first goal for Eze should have stood. And if that goes, then it could easily be a different game. The fact that we got robbed by that decision and then Brentford went and scored after two, three minutes. And then the Edward decision to be offside when he's literally staring at the defenders is criminal to me. That could have been avoided if he just tiny bit behind the defender. He easily makes that ball and he slots it in um, still. So that would have been two-one situation. So we scored three goals, but of course only one of them counted. So it's not like we didn't find the net. And despite that, a lot of people were upset. So the standards are high at Palace right now, going even going into this game. Um, so yes, it was frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. Um, if if I didn't have faith in this manager, it would be. But I do have faith in him, and a lot of Palace fans do as well. So it's not it's not that bad. And you know, we've got a chance to prove ourselves at home. That was an away game against uh, West Ham, who you know we have beat um, quite recently um, at home and also away from home. So, yeah, so it's, it's a good opportunity for us. So the big thing, the big talking points about Palace and, the, you know, big conception is that there's a big fire sale going on in your squad, mm. right? Lise is gone. Gahey, obviously, is, is we're going to find out apparently by the end of the week if he's going to be a Newcastle player or a, or a Palace player. So we'll see about that. Eze obviously has been linked with moves away. Yeah. Anderson been linked with moves away. Like, what is going on? Like, do you hand on heart, like, think that all of these players will be at Palace by the, by the end of the transfer window? Which ones do you think are staying? Which ones do you think will go? So, so yeah, I mean, Eze's release clause has actually expired. So he'll be staying. He won't be leaving the club. Uh, do you think that means he won't leave, though? Because with, with yeah, he's not leaving. I'm, I'm, I tradition. Can say, I'll get, I'll get iron. That. I'll get iron mark on my forehead if Ezra was leaving this window. <laughs> he's hundred percent not leaving. If, by the way, by the way, I just have to reiterate the terms and conditions to that. If that release clause thing is true and doesn't have a release clause anymore, he can't be activated. Ezra is hundred percent not leaving. I would. I would, yeah, I that could doesn't do whatever. mean he's not leaving because with release clauses, traditionally, when a club activates a release clause, they have to pay all of the money up front. Mm. All this means is okay, so you could ask for more than the release clause, which was what 65 mil. No one's going to pay what we asked for, Eze. We're not what even willing to sell Eze. We won't sell Eze. It's not even a money issue. It's too late in a window. Too late in a window. We won't be selling Eze. I'm, I'm confident now. <laughs> if we had the release clause, you think I'm, I would ever be saying anything like this? No, that would be silly because there's always a chance, even the likes of City. But even with the release clause, there was a good chance that he ends up staying at Palace. Tottenham, we know, are not serious. City, after the Oscar Bob injury, could have been, you know, after Eze. But then again, it didn't seem like that was, you know, their number one target because... You know, they've been flirting, but they haven't really shown any signs of being seriously interested in SA. But now that the release clause is done and dusted and people weren't willing to pay around 60 to 68 million pounds, which is the reported clause, 
if we charge higher, there's not going to be any teams that will be willing to pay that. I mean, if they wanted to, they would have paid it up already. They wouldn't wait till like you know late August um, and pay extra money. So, and and we can easily reject it now. So it's not a problem for me. Gehi, um, he could be leaving or Anderson is a bit confusing, but they both won't be leaving. I think one could be leaving. Then again, with the centre back situation, I don't think any Palace fan out there is actually worried. Look, Gehi is our best defender. There's no denying that. And this sounds funny that I'd be okay with him leaving um, because the replacements that are lined up, they're more than good enough for us. It's not an area which I think we're struggling. And in fact, it allows us even further to spend more money elsewhere so we can strengthen the squad even further by sending Gehi. So it's a win-win situation. If he ends up leaving for Newcastle, we get a good amount of money. Um, even after selling clause to should have £50 million left over. Uh, and his replacement should cost around 15 20 max if it's LaCroix. Um, even that, um, potentially even lower than that because he's got a year left on his deal. Anderson leaves £35 million to 40 Very good money. We signed a replacement. We've still got money to spend. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about everyone leaving at this, at this current stage. And th- this narrative has been going on. It's been tiring. It has been tiring because according to every single body out there that doesn't support Palace, it seems like, Palace have sold all of their best players. But, I mean, we start the Brentford game with only Elise sold and three players coming into the football club. So, well, yeah, we'll see. Like, it's going to be interesting as well because if you do sell Gahey, then obviously, yeah, you, you'll look to get a replacement. You'll have money. But you won't have that in time for the West Ham game, which means mm. there's a hole in your defence. I don't know if you'll that... sell him... Mm. Well, they said it will be resolved by the end of the week. That's why I, I don't yeah, know. Well, about week guys My weekend's on a Sunday. I don't know about your week. Um, well, by the end, <laughs> by the end of the week, I'm, I think Friday. I'm thinking Friday. <laughs> well, you know I mean? my week has seven days. Your week might have. Well, five, it's, it's, we're talking about business week. The end of the business week. Yeah, working, they, working it's working not on. like the transfer windows close on the weekends. It's not like it's not like the stock market. I mean, you can still <laughs> do transactions. Okay, on but a if you sell night. him on, if you're gonna, if you decide you're gonna sell him on Sunday. You're not going to play him on Saturday because if he gets injured, then then well, we're not really willing to sell Gehi. That's the funny thing about it. Like it's not a situation where oh we need to keep him fit. I mean the talks. There's clearly talks even now, um, even in the Brentford game, for example, of Gehi potentially leaving. Not only did he start, he captain the side. So it's not like oh if Gehi uh, look if they're putting a bid and he's accepted, then that's a different situation. But if they're still talking and nothing is agreed. He will still play against West Ham. Like, there's no reason for him not to. Um, I mean, if Newcastle are serious, they'll go and pay up the money. Um, we know what we want. They p- keep putting in bids, just pay up, and then you can have Gehi if, if you know, if if that's what they want. Yeah, well, we'll see. Like I said, it'll be it'll be interesting for 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 the sake of. For, I mean, I don't want to see him go to Newcastle. Um, just you don't like Newcastle. See him yeah, I, I just I think some of their fans that you know they they just get a bit ahead of them. You know what? I used to actually like Newcastle, but now I kind of agree with you. They they yeah. do seem a bit entitled recently, especially with the gay situations. Mm-hmm. Open up my eyes a bit more. I was always thinking on, on the length of you know why are people jealous of Newcastle? Um, people keep get, hating on them, etc. After the new ownership model, but. You are kind of right. You know, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I think this might be the first time in life I've ever agreed with you. Um, which is there you go. Yeah, which is to do with Newcastle. Um, the gay situation has opened up my eyes. But they, they have rights to be entitled, right? They've got one of the richest owners in the world. And they're trying to um, take that spot, European spot, which is very limited already. Well, so. that, that's another thing. I don't want to see them strengthened um, in that area, which will make them tougher. Um, so I'm hoping for that. But for the sake of this game, three points, like Gehi not being there would make things easier for us. Mm. Um, you know, so that's what I'm hoping. I mean, going into it, obviously we've signed a lot of players. Starting with like one of the signings, your boy Aaron Wambasaka. Like we, we haven't got to see him yet in a West Ham shirt to play. What can you tell us about like what we can expect from Aaron Wan Basaka? He was a bit of a fan favourite at the time, sold mm-hmm. for big money at Palace, could be returning back to Selhurst Park. What, what are you thinking about that? Yeah. Against that? I mean, I think in his um announcement video or you know the interviews that they do, he did mention the favourite stadium he likes to play in is has been Selhurst Park. So he'll be returning to his favourite ground, 
Um, favorite away ground. Favorite away. Well, of course, it's not going to be his favorite home ground, is it? The play for West Ham, like <laughs> favorite away ground. Yeah. It's his favorite ground outside. Well, yeah, his favorite. Yeah, favorite away ground. So that means out of um, wet, uh, London Stadium, which ain't played it yet. Yeah, Old Trafford and Selhurst Park. Selhurst Park isn't his favorite home stadium, but as an away ground to play away, it's his. Let's favorite. be real. Oh, what type of like? Shifting, are you doing? He plays for West Ham, so of course, like he's not going to say they are some favorite away ground for a reason. If he said home ground, he would lie and he'd say London Stadium because I don't think West Ham fans themselves like the London Stadium. So let's be honest, it's not like it's like an amazing, brilliant stadium. A lot of players do like it, funny enough, like from a playing perspective, players like it more than fans, funny enough. Yeah, because because they're not under the pressure, well, the, the fans are not on top of the players exactly as they were back in the day. Um, they're a bit more calm in that situation, so I, I'm sure they'll like it. But look, all jokes aside, with Wan Bissaka, uh, when he left Palace, he left for 50 million pounds, um, and there was a reason for that. He was the upcoming, um, right back, not even just upcoming, he proved his talents defensively, especially, and he improved over time even at Palace his forward play and it was going in the right direction um and we sold him for 50 million pound we built new academy facilities um so that was great I'm so happy for that um but he just needs to find a home now to settle in um I think Manchester United has been a toxic club for numerous years we've seen a lot of players go Man United and flop so I wouldn't just look at his time at Manchester United Manchester United and say oh look he's not going to be a good player because he's struggled there no, there is a good player in Wan Bissaka. He's very good defensively. And remember, he started off as a winger, uh, not as a defender. So naturally, he should have something going forward, even though that hasn't been his strengths. Um, and Lopetegui, in terms of his style of play, um, I think that system will suit him, um, especially the way that Wan Bissaka defends as well. So, so yeah, I think it's a good environment for him. I think it's a good signing for you, Lop, because Kufal, for me, wouldn't fit the system and it's getting a bit older. So you do need fresh legs. And of course, you're pushing, aiming to push into European spots after spending so much money and keeping some of your best players. Um, I think it's a very good addition to have at your football club. Um, it's a player that we've always struggled against um, because he's just good whenever he's played. But the problem is he hasn't had that many opportunities at United. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree about Man United. It's almost like they just ruin like any player that they sign of any pro promise like most of the time like they mm. sign players from smaller clubs and yeah they just kill like, any talent out of them um any other any of our other signings that maybe you're looking at and going you know what i'd be worried to play against that player or that that you know as well as was a good uh, signing. Any other ones that stood out to you out of that? signed quite a few players i mean Somerville was a good signing. Yeah. we were linked with him as well uh, Todibo, I believe, is, is that how you pronounce yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I need to see with him. There's a lot of hype right now. There is a lot of hype. Man United wanted him. Yeah, but it doesn't really concern me who Man United wanted. Um, as I said, we literally spoke about Man Manchester United and their problems. I know they got a new infrastructure at a football club, a new sporting director, etc. So, yeah. Um, but I'm not, I'm not as, yeah, I, ne I need to see from him. But some of you, I think it's going to be a very good signing for you lot. And maybe he's not getting spoken about as much. Um, but to have him as a depth option off the bench is ridiculous. To have Kudos, Bowen and Somerville, um, that is very good. A very good player if you do need to rotate. And he's a genuine player that can come off the bench and contribute. Um, but yeah, I think I'd pick him out for, for now. Uh, wan Bissaka, as I said, is solid. Um, your striker that you got, um, he is, you know, we've seen glimpses of him in the Euros. Um, he was, he done well at Dortmund. But for me, with West Ham and Strikers, you probably may you may agree or disagree with me, but you haven't got a great um um outlook so far with Strikers. Strikers are well, well. I I I don't think any West Ham fan could agree with that because we've we've seen them all. We've seen some real shockers and we've seen some great strikers come in and it just not fit what we're trying to do. Exactly. Really. So I need to wait and see yeah. for the striker situation because, I mean, so, we've been here yeah. in the past, you spent good money on strikers, but then they've come to West Ham and they just couldn't just perform. It's just ridiculous. And then they leave West Ham and they look like they're scoring again. So it's, yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't know what goes on there, but you've got a new manager, Lopetegui, so let's see if we can get the best out of them. This Saturday, will we match those standards coming into it like 
you know, when you look at it, who who is the 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 key player for West Ham that you're like worried about? You're looking and go, this is going to be a problem if this player plays. This is going to be a problem for us. Hmm. This player is going to be a problem for us. I don't know. You got a few yeah. quality players, but like, I mean, it might sound cocky, but I'm not like I'm worried about a particular player. <laughs> Come on, Bowen. Yeah, no, we got Bowen Kudus, but we've we've seen we've seen Bowen Kudus before, and I think Mitchell and Munoz, for example, are good enough to stop Bowen and Kudus. Now, who are you going to be playing up front? Antonio again, potentially. I mean, we've seen Antonio, and we've got three defenders at the back, so I don't think that really worries me. Um, Wan Bissaka could be a worry. Um, if he starts because Eze will be playing down his side, so he could stop Eze, which um, you know, which stops our creativity there. But that's not even me acting like cocky or anything. There are you got some serious ballers, but there's not a particular one that worries me because of some of the players that we have to kind of counter that. But Wan Bissaka, I think, could stop Palace's attack um, if he if he does start. Uh, but yeah, you've got quality players all around. You have got quality players all around. There's no denying that. Um, it's now about getting the best out of them, which I've seen first hand at Palace, like a manager can make or break plays. 100% can make or break plays. So that's why, even though you've signed all of these players and they are great, we need to see how much Lopetegui gets out of them. That's why I'm not getting carried away with West Ham just yet. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, you're confident. You're confident. I'm not confident, and... but I'm not worried as well. Um, we got the first game out of the way. We needed that. And now we're at home. First home game of the season. Um, you have signed new players, but I mean Lopetegui as your manager once again. I'm not. I'm not like, whoa, we face a West Ham. Like I think you can easily end up in like two one to West Ham. You can end up two, but I don't like. I'm not. There's no serious concern. I think you can go both ways. Okay. Okay, with that said, I know we did the predictions on your channel, but for the benefit of the people that are too lazy to check that out, I do encourage you to check out the preview on on Back of the Nest because we did go into more of West Ham um, from a West Ham perspective. So you can check that out. Links down below. But, yeah, are you? We've some time has passed, so I'm hoping that you've come to your senses. Since that preview, you've reflected on it. We've talked now, and you can say, do you know what? I'm going to change my prediction. And you're going to say the right thing. Um, yeah, the right thing is 2-1 Palace. Um, is our first home game of the season. We haven't lost to West Ham in a while. Uh, I saw the game that you lot played against Villa. You weren't bad, but I could see Palace managing to stop that attack. Um, and I think we'll bounce back. The last time we lost a game, we went seven games unbeaten. Um, and that was against City last time uh, before Brentford. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's the time, you know, the Grim Reaper is back for West Ham. <laughs> have to wake up, have to wake up and just face it. It just happens. It happens twice a year. Um, but, but here we are. Here we are once again. And it's coming to set us apart. Here's what it is. Listen, that's a, di- it's a different time. You've got those wins under a different manager. Right, so let's not act like you've I mean, always we beat had you with Roy Hodgson in charge, so we've managed to no, but I'm talking about our that. manager. We had a different manager, like that record stood under the previous manager. It, it was one manager that you had that good record against. It weren't like Palace always has this amazing record against West Ham. We've still beat you more than you've beat us in our history, yeah. Right, so new manager, new era, 2 1 win. Away from home, we get them first three you points must, of the season. You must, you must. If, really? if you lose another game, that West Ham Twitter is going to be exploding. That is going to be exploding. I know, I know how your fans yeah, are. Yeah, listen. I know how your fans are. Yeah, and there's a reason for that, by the way. For example, I've said this as well. I mean, some Palace fans were frustrated after a loss. After a loss, every fan base gets frustrated. But I do think there are some people in your fan base that do have serious questions about Lopetegui. Um, and that don't I think him. it's okay to have questions. It's okay, yeah. To, to yeah, have but then questions, I feel but... like it's more than just having questions. I feel like some people just don't want him. Um, and now it's like as soon as he loses their games, like here we go again. You lot want to Lopetegui, so what's this all about? Agendas. So it's not really helps yeah. him. Yeah, it's just agendas. That's what I mean. It's okay to have questions, but you once the manager's in, give it give it a chance. Like there's no point every loss. It's going to be a very long season if people are doing that. Like, let's just, you know, give 
the new manager a chance. I get, I give managers a season. Do you know what I mean? Unless it's a disaster. If it, you know, if we have an underwhelming season, you have the second season to build on, show that you've learned something and improve. And if you don't, then you're out. I did it with Pellegrini. You know what I mean? Moyes. That's my way. Yeah. So having said that, yes, 2-1 West Ham. Important win. Kick on. Rest of the season. Go check out Back of the Nest. Um, you can also see me and D on Top Man, uh, Top Man's football uh, on London, London. Football, I always, forget, I always want to say London calling. What is no, the name no, of the show? This is London. This is London. This is London. Yeah. This is London. This is London. It's it's London. London yes. clubs. Carney. We are in. Yes. London. <laughs> yes, and I tell you what. After Saturday, that Wednesday show is going to be carnage, one way or another. I'm relaxed for now. I'm relaxed for now. I'm not. Okay. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about losing to West Ham. It doesn't happen quite often, and we'll I have see. faith in the Austrian that leads our football club because he is a better manager than Lopetegui. And it's time to just, as I said, the Green Reaper in South London. Just come. Just come. Just bring your soul over. Just, it's not gonna hurt. It's just one off, ninety minutes, and then afterwards you can go back. You can go back. But South London is cursed for West Ham. We'll see. Also, look out. You'll be seeing D in a West Ham shirt, eating a Scotch bonnet pepper, singing bubbles, because we finished above them very soon on 12th Man Football. Uh, so, football's 12th right. Man. Um, so, look out for that. He's ordering the West Ham shirt as we as we speak. Mm. And it'll be in a better shade of red and blue. Yeah, better shade, claret and blue. The better red and blue. Look out for that soon. So, thanks, D. And um, one thing left to say. Come on, you irons. <laughs>